Hi everyone, this is Mostly Casual Commander, I'm BK, and today I have a game of Commander for you. Our commanders in this game are Corvold, Fae Cursed King, the Ur Dragon, Prosper, Tomebound, and Lathril, Blade of the Elves. J-Man won the dice roll, so he's first in the turn order. He's playing Corvold, who really likes to sacrifice things, pump himself up, and draw you cards. He kept a 7-card hand with Stomping Ground, Mountain, Phyrexian Arena, Goblin Crater Maker, Arcane Signet, Crop Rotation, and a Witch's Oven. Second up is Busterkins, who is playing the Ur Dragon, trying to cheat out a whole bunch of terrifying dragons. He kept a six-card hand of Arcane Sanctum, Vivid Crag, Swamp, Forest, Steel Hellkite, and Path to Exile. He bottomed a mountain with his mulligan. Next in the turn order is BK, myself. I'm playing Prosper Tomebound, really caring about exiling all sorts of things and making an insane amount of treasure. I kept a 7 card hand with Tainted Peak, Smoldering Marsh, Swamp, The Devil, Theater of Horrors, Lightning Greaves, and Talisman of Indulgence. Finally we have Kyle. He's playing Lathril, Blade of the Elves, who cares about making all sorts of elves and pumping them up. He kept a 6 card hand with Path of Ancestry, Undergrowth Stadium, Castle Lockthwain, Timberwatch Elf, Elvish Clan Caller, Landwar Elves, and he had to bottom a Quirion Ranger. So let's get right into the game. J-Man kicks us off, playing a Bloodfell Caves, gaining a life, and saying go. Busterkins drops a Vivid Crag, with two counters on it. I play a Smoldering Marsh, and pass it over to Kyle, who plays an Undergrowth Stadium. He casts Landwar Elves with that, and passes it over to J-Man. He draws for turn, plays a mountain as his land for turn, casts Arcane Signet, giving him access to one more mana, which he uses to cast Crop Rotation, sacrificing his mountain and finding a Temple of Malady. This gives him a scry, and he decides to bottom it. Passing it over to Busterkins, he drops a Savage Lands as his land for turn, and with nothing else he says go. I play a Tainted Peak. And I follow that up with a Talisman of Indulgence. And that ends my turn. Over to Kyle, he draws, drops a Path of Ancestry, enabling some future scries. He then casts an Elvish Clan Caller, pumping up all of his elves. For J-Man, he draws, he plays a Stomping Ground as his land, he pays two to have it unt untapped. He then casts Phyrexian Arena, enabling future draws on his upkeep. He casts Fountain of Renewal, gaining life on his upkeep, and passes it to Busterkins. He plays an Arcane Sanctum, enters the battlefield tapped, over to me, I draw and drop a Swamp, then I follow that up by casting my commander, Prosper Tomebound. On my end step I trigger, and I exile a card with Prosper's ability. In this case it's Fell War Stone. Over to Kyle, he draws for his turn, plays Blooming Marsh, which enters untapped. He then pays 4, and brings out his commander, Lathril, Blade of the Elves. He does so using Path of Ancestry, allowing him to scry, then he moves to combat, attacking J-Man, dealing 1 point of damage. On J-Man's upkeep, he gets to draw a card and lose a life with Phyrexian Arena, and gains 1 life due to Fountain of Renewal. He then puts down a Swamp, and casts his commander, Corvold, Fae Cursed King. This triggers his ability, and he sacks the Fountain of Renewal, giving a counter to Corvold and drawing him a card. He passes it over to Busterkins, he draws for turn, plays a Vivid Meadow, which enters with two counters on it. He then casts a Commander Sphere, accelerating his mana production. Passes it to me, I untap and draw for turn, I play a Mountain, and then I cast a Soul Ring, continuing to accelerate my mana production, and do so even more by casting Fell War Stone from Exile, which triggers Prosper's ability, giving me a treasure as well. Beyond that, I cast a Theater of Horrors, which will set up my exile effects uh, starting my next upkeep. Then Lightning Greaves comes into the battlefield, and I move it over to Prosper, giving him Shroud. Then on my end step, I trigger Prosper and reveal a Dream Devourer, which goes into exile. On Kyle's turn, he moves right into the red zone, attacking J-Man. J-Man declares no blocks, goes to 35, and Kyle gets to make three elf tokens. He then plays a forest for his land drop, and casts Guardian Project, setting him up for future card advantage. On to J-Man's turn, he draws for Phyrexian Arena, and then draws for turn, drops Blooming Marsh as his land, and then plays a Dockside Extortionist, which is insane and gives him 
eight sacrificial treasures in his Korvald deck. So he starts going to work. He sacrifices his treasures to make some floating mana, which each time he does this, it triggers Korvald, giving him a plus one plus one counter, as well as drawing him a card. He casts a Ravenous Squirrel, which also likes it when you sacrifice artifacts or creatures by giving it a plus one plus one counter as well. So the more treasures he sacrifices, the more floating mana he receives, the more plus one plus one counters he gets on his creatures, and he's really pulling ahead with tons of card advantage, mana advantage, and power and toughness on the battlefield at this point. So he sacrifices all of his treasure, has a total of 8 floating mana, and then uses that to cast Rapacious Dragon. When, when that enters the battlefield, he gets 2 more treasures. And he sacks that, again looping that sequence to gain up floating mana, triggering his creatures, drawing him a card. Then he casts a Death Sprout. Using that floating mana, he kills Lathril, and this also allows him to find a forest from his library, put onto the battlefield tapped. And then he casts an Elvish Mystic, using up the last of his floating mana, before he moves to combat, swinging his crazy big Korvold at BK, sacrificing his Dockside Extortionists, and dropping BK down to 25. So quite an explosive turn from J-Man. Here he has to discard down to hand size. Now on his end step, Busterkins decides to Path of Exile his Korvold, you know, it would have been nice if he could have done it before combat, but whatever. So J-Man finds a mountain. On to Busterkin's turn, he plays a Swamp as his land, while J-Man puts his mountain into play. Busterkin's then drops a Dragon Speaker Shaman, reducing the cost of his Dragon Spells. With that, he casts Steel Hellkite, a flying creature that can blow up a whole bunch of stuff if it hits your opponent. On to BK's turn, Theater of Horror triggers on the upkeep, exiling Inspiring Statuary, which could grant Improvise to my non-artifact spells. I play a Swamp for turn, and then I cast Dream Devourer from Exile. This triggers Prosper, Tomebound, giving me a treasure. I then activate Theater of Horror and deal one point of damage to J-Man. This allows me to cast Inspiring Statuary from Exile, triggering Prosper again, giving me another treasure. On the end step, Prosper triggers, moving a Mountain into Exile. Kyle draws for turns, drops a Wood Elves, which allows him to fight a forest card. This triggers multiple things, Path of Ancestry allows him to scry, then he draws with Guardian Project, and finally he founds an overgrown tomb with his Wood Elves. He plays Command Tower as his land for turn, and then he casts Dark Ritual, giving him three black floating mana, which he uses immediately to cast Lathroll Blade of the Elves. This triggers Guardian Project, drawing another card. On to combat, he swings at BK with his three tokens. BK blocks two of them and takes two life. This kills one of his tokens as well. J-Man's turn, he draws his two cards and loses a life. Plays a Woodland Cemetery. He considers his options and casts a Goblin Crater Maker. Another sacrificial lamb that does a thing when it dies. Then he casts Orzhov Enforcer, which has Afterlife 1. And he moves to combat with his Ravenous Squirrel at Busterkins, who decides to take it, dropping him down to 32. Then he activates his Goblin Crater Maker, blowing up the Dragon Speaker Shaman. This gives another plus one plus one counter to Ravenous Squirrel. J-Man then plays a Crucible of the Worlds, hoping to recur his lands from the graveyard to the battlefield. Busterkin plays a Forest for turn, goes right into combat, swinging a BK with his Steel Hellkite. I cannot allow that, so I blow it up with Bedevil. I couldn't have him blowing up all my stuff. So then he plays a Tyrant's Familiar post-combat, and passes it over to BK. On my upkeep, Theater of Horrors triggers, and this will exile a mountain underneath. And I draw for turn, and I play the mountain from exile, and triggers Prosper, giving me a treasure. Then I cast the Tybalt Cosmic Imposter side of the MDFC Valky God of Lies. I then minus three, and use that to exile Kyle's commander. With nothing up to do, I move to end step and get a Jeska's Will into the exile zone. On Kyle's turn, he untaps and draws, and he plays Elvish Archdruid, pumping up his team and getting a bunch of triggers. He scries one with Path, then he draws, then he drops a Timberwatch Elf. Again, he draws with Guardian Project. He plays Castle Lockthwain, unfortunately enters tapped. He then moves to the red zone, swinging at Tybalt, Cosmic Imposter. I use Prosper to kill his Wood Elves and Tybalt dies, unfortunately. J-Man's turn, he draws his two cards, he drops a Swamp, 
Then he recasts his commander. This triggers and he decides to sacrifice a swamp. Then he casts Piper of the Swarm. A rat lord moves to combat, swinging his ravenous squirrel at Busterkins, who trump blocks. With nothing else to do, he says go. On Busterkins' turn, he floats a white mana with his commander sphere and sacks it to draw a card, followed by playing an island for his land for turn. He then pays to cast a Hellkite Charger, a 5-5 hasty boy that he decides to leave back on defense. Moving over to BK's turn, Theater of Horrors triggers on my upkeep, and I exile Ignite the Future, another card that can help me exile other cards. With help from Improvise, I cast Jessica's Will, which triggers Prosper. I target J-Man, and in response he Doomblades one of Kyle's Lords. That way I don't gain as much mana off of this interaction. So I get four floating red mana, I exile the top three cards in my library. I find a Flame Skull, Murderous Rider, and a Commune with Lava. Following that, I cast the Flame Skull from Exile, which triggers Prosper, giving me a treasure. After that, I cast Commune with Lava for 7. This gives me another treasure, and I go deeper by 7 cards, exiling Bajuka Bog, Soul Shatter, Profane Tutor, a Mountain, Reckless Fireweaver, Kalane, Reclusive Painter, and a Terminate. At this point, I'm pretty much going off. I cast Swift End from Murderous Rider, killing Corvold and giving me more treasures. And being tapped out at this point, I trigger Prosper on the end step and exile Shadow Blood Ridge. On the Kyle's turn, he casts Toski, Bearer of Secrets. If left unchecked, can just really pull ahead with card advantage. He then moves to attack and hits Busterkins. This triggers Toski four times. He then drops a Swamp, plays a Findhorn Elves, again triggering his Guardian Project and Path of Ancestry. He plays Quest for Renewal, which will allow him to untap all of his Elves every upkeep. Following that up with a Wirewood Symbiote, triggering Guardian and thwapping the hell out of that card. On to J-Man's turn. He drops Command Tower as his land. Then he taps out for Corvold, Fake Cursed King as Commander. This triggers and has him sacrificing a Swamp drawing a card. He then plays Urza's Bobble for zero. Then he sacks it, takes a peek at Kyle's hand. This of course triggers his creatures. He gets plus one plus one counters and draws a card. He'll also draw a card on Busterkin's upkeep. Then Busterkin's draws. He then plays a forest as his land and unfortunately has to say go. On my upkeep I exile Zorn underneath Theater of Horrors. I play Bajuka Bog from Exile, which triggers Prosper, giving me a treasure. I target J-Man's Graveyard because Dockside is in it. I cast Terminate on Corvold. This triggers Prosper again, giving me another treasure. After that, I suspend Profane Tutor into Exile. This unfortunately does not trigger Prosper because I'm not casting it. From Exile, I cast Reckless Fireweaver, which triggers Prosper, makes a treasure. Unfortunately, Fireweaver doesn't see that treasure being made, so it doesn't hit everybody. I then ping down J-Man with Theater of Horrors in order to cast Zorn, which I should have done earlier in the turn. I forget to make a treasure right there, unfortunately, but I do cast Kalane, Reclusive Painter. This makes a total of four treasures, so Reckless Fireweaver deals four damage total to my opponents. Following that, I improvise and tap, pinging myself one life to play Soul Shatter having all of my opponents exile their creature with the highest amount of value among them. This again makes me two treasures and pings my opponents for two life. Then I cast Murderous Rider from Exile, making two more treasures, pinging two more life. It's giving me all the treasures at this point. I move to combat with Flame Skull at Busterkins. I cast Ignite the Future, again triggering Prosper Tonebound, giving me two treasures. I exile Light Up the Stage, Ganti, Lord of Luxury, and an Exotic Orchard. After that, I make the two treasures and I ping my opponents to life. I cast Ganti, Lord of Luxury, from Exile, triggering Prosper. I target Busterkins and look at the top four, exiling one of them under Ganti. Deals two more damage to my opponents, and then I improvise out Busterkin's Dragon, the Scourge of Volkos. From Exile, again triggering Prosper, making me two more treasures, dealing two more damage to my opponents, and I cast Light Up the Stage for one given spectacle. And two more treasures, therefore two more damage. I reveal 
mountain and a rolling earthquake. At this point, I'm not exactly sure what the best play was, but I do decide to cast the rolling earthquake, where x equals 2. This first off triggers Prosper again, and in response, Kyle has some actions here. He pumps up one of his elves with his Timber Watch elf. He then bounces his Lana War elves back to his hand with Wirewood Symbiote. This allows him to untap his Timber Watch elves, also putting a quest counter. He then retaps his Timber Watch elf, giving plus seven plus seven to his other elf. And then damage resolves, dealing two damage to each creature and opponent. This makes a spirit from J Man's Orzov Enforcer. And Flame Skull moves to the exile zone, exiling Lelia, the Blade Reforged, given its ability. At this point in the turn, I'm truly impressed with what Prosper has going on. Just the uh, stormy kind of feeling that it has with all the treasure token creation and all the moving through cards. Um, the writing was on the wall for Busterkins. He knew that I was about to cast Lelia, so he scoops it up, and he gets knocked out of the game. With nothing left to do, I move to end step, which puts a Dragon Skull Summit into exile. Kyle draws for turn, and then he casts his Land of War Elves, drawing him a card. He casts Marwyn, the Nurturer, again drawing him a card, and this time scrying one with Path of Ancestry. He follows that by playing Azuri, Renegade Leader, an overrun effect on a stick. This Let's him draw a card. Then he drops down a Phyrexian Tower onto the battlefield, which will allow him to sacrifice things. He taps for a floating green mana, and then casts Numa, Jorgen Chieftain, triggering and allowing him to draw a card. He then goes to combat with Elvish Clan Caller. This triggers Quest of Renewal. J-Man decides to put his spirit in front of him. In response, Kyle activates his Timberwatch Elf, pumping up his Clan Caller. This kills the spirit, keeping his crew alive. On the J-Man's upkeep, Kyle gets to untap his creatures. J-Man draws two, drops a swamp for his land, then he bakes into Pi, my reckless fire weaver. This also gives J-Man a food token. He then activates his ravenous squirrel, gaining a life, drawing a card and a counter on his squirrel, sacrificing Crucible. He moves to combat at me, a block with Gonti. Before damage, he activates his squirrel again, sacrificing the food token, gaining a life, drawing a card, and both creatures die. On J-Man's end step, Kyle casts Chord of Calling, where X equals 4, and he tutors up Dwynen, Giltleaf Dean. On my upkeep, I exile a mountain under Theater of Horrors. I cycle a Canyon Slew, and then I cast Thrill of Possibility, discarding two lands and drawing two cards. I find Hurl Through Hell, and with it I exile Kyle's Reach creature, which allows me to cast it. And then I move to attacks, and by pumping up Scourge of Valkus, using my treasures, I have lethal combat damage against both of my opponents. Good game, guys. Had a lot of fun. So, please tell us what you think, and also please like and subscribe to support the channel. Thank you very much for watching.